Welcome to Properties of Special Parallelograms. Today's objectives are to prove and apply properties of rectangles, rhombuses, and squares. Our second objective is to use the properties of rectangles, rhombuses, and squares to solve problems. So rectangles are special types of quadrilaterals. So specifically, when we're talking about a rectangle, the definition of a rectangle is a quadrilateral with four right angles. This is the definition of a rectangle. Now rectangles have certain theorems and we're going to go over two of those theorems right here. The first theorem says that if a quadrilateral is a rectangle then that rectangle is a parallelogram. Now for this video, instead of spelling out the word parallelogram, what I'm going to be doing is drawing this symbol right here. So this symbol right here means parallelogram. The second theme that we're going to discuss is if we have a rectangle then what we know as diagonals those are going to be congruent so in this image right here we say that segment BD is congruent to segment CA So the first theorem says that if a quadrilateral is a rectangle, then that rectangle is a parallelogram. Second theorem says that if we have a rectangle, then we know the diagonals are congruent. Let's use our knowledge of those theorems to answer these questions about rectangles. So the rectangular gate has diagonal braces. Let's find each length. So the first thing we want to find is HJ, which is this segment right here. Now, since a rectangle is a parallelogram, we know that the opposite sides are congruent. So opposite of HJ is GK. And if GK equals 48 inches, then we know that HJ equals 48 inches as well. Next, let's find the measurement of HK. Now, HK is this diagonal right here. Now, since this is a rectangle, we know that it's also a parallelogram. And we know that parallelograms, their diagonals bisect each other. So if we know this segment right here is 30.8, then we know this part right here is also 30.8. So if we add those two together, we get 61.6. And this is the length of diagonal JG. Now we discussed that if we have a rectangle, the diagonals are congruent. So, if JG is 61.6, then HK has to be the same, 61.6. The next type of quadrilateral we're going to talk about is a rhombus. Now, the definition of a rhombus is 
is a quadrilateral with four congruent sides. So a rhombus is a quadrilateral with four congruent sides. That's the definition of a rhombus. And there are three theorems that I want to discuss about a rhombus, and I'm going to use these pictures to discuss these three. So our first theorem says that if we have a rhombus, then we know that rhombus is a parallelogram. So that means all the properties of parallelograms apply to a rhombus. Our next theorem, if we have a rhombus, we know that the diagonals are perpendicular. So they're not drawn on here, but technically each one of these diagonals makes a 90 degree angle with each other. So our first theorem was if we have a rhombus, we know it's a parallelogram. Our second theorem says if we have a rhombus, we know the diagonals are perpendicular. And the last one says that if we have a rhombus, the diagonals bisect the opposite angles. So let's write that out. If we have a rhombus, then each diagonal bisects the opposite angles. So let's think what that means. In this image here, so let's, let's look at this diagonal right here, BD. So BD bisects this angle right here. So that means that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. And angle 5 has to be congruent to angle 6. Because the diagonal bisected it. And also, angle 8 is congruent to angle 7. And angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. Because diagonal AC bisected this angle and that angle. So those are our three theorems about rhombuses. Now let's use the properties of rhombuses to find these measures. So the first measure we're going to find is VT. Now the definition of a rhombus is a quadrilateral with four congruent sides. So that means that ST has to equal SR. Now here we know ST is 4x plus 7 and we know SR is 9x minus 11. Then from there we just use algebra and we have 18 equals 5x. We solve for x and x equals 3.6. Now what we're trying to find is VT. Now since all of these sides are congruent, we can say that VT is congruent to any other side. So let's say VT is equal to ST. Now we know what ST equals. ST is 4x plus 7. We found out what x equals, so we just take that and plug it in right here. So VT equals 4 times 3.6 plus 7. We do that math out, and we are left with 21.4. So 21.4 is not only the length of VT, but it's the length of every side of this rhombus, since all the sides are congruent. 
In this example, we're still working with a rhombus, but now we're trying to find the measure of angle WSR. So the first thing I want to do is actually highlight this angle in the drawing. So I'll look for angle WSR, which is this angle right here. So for this problem, we have to use a few of the properties of a rhombus. Now I know that one of the properties said that the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. This is the first theorem that I have to use. Now why am I using that? Well, this angle right here talks about this angle right here. Now, if these diagonals are perpendicular, I know this has to be a 90 degree angle. So, I can just say that 2y plus 10 equals 90 degrees, since this angle here is perpendicular. So now I can just solve for y. 2y equals 80. Therefore, y has to equal 40. Now this is helpful for me because now I know what y equals. Now the second theorem that I have to use is to remember that the diagonals of a rhombus they bisect opposite angles. So that means that this angle WSR is congruent to this angle WST. So let me write that here. Angle WSR is congruent to angle WST. Now I can find this angle because I know that it's right here. It's Y plus 2. I know Y equals so let me just write that y plus 2 is what that angle equals. I know what y equals, that's just 40. So that means the measure of angle WSR equals 40 plus 2, or 42 degrees. So the first thing we had to do was find the measure of this angle, which we knew what it was because the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular, and then we just solved for y, plugged y back into our angle right here, and then we knew that this angle and this angle were congruent. And the last quadrilateral that we're going to talk about today is a square. Now a square is special because it's a combination of a parallelogram a rectangle and a rhombus. But the formal definition of a square is a quadrilateral with four right angles and four congruent sides. So a square is a quadrilateral with four congruent sides and four right angles. Now here's the thing about a square. A square is a parallelogram. A square is a rectangle. And a square is also a rhombus. So one way to remember this is to say, well, a square can be a parallelogram. A square can be a rectangle. And a square can be a rhombus. But a parallelogram is not always a square. And this applies for all of these. 
So a parallelogram is not always a square. A rectangle is not always a square. And a rhombus is not always a square. But a square can be all of these. All right, and that's the end of the video for today. Once again, we went over squares, rectangles, rhombuses, and parallelograms today. Thank you and take care.